The Port of San Diego may be at a critical crossroads in its efforts to attract new maritime investments. That's according to one local attorney and community activist who wrote an op-ed article recently featured in the San Diego Union Tribune. It concerns the significance of the Mitsubishi Cement Company deal with San Diego. Bob Oddley, who wrote the article, joins us now to talk more about the issue and also the importance for the region. Bob, good to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Hi, Logan. Thanks for having me on. For people not familiar with this Mitsubishi lease issue and the port and how it impacts the area, can you just kind of summarize it for us? Well, quick overview. The Port of San Diego controls all of the shoreline on the San Diego Bay, and it generates in that land area 45,000 jobs to the region. We have two maritime terminals. And we just spent $24 million in public funds to renovate the 10th Avenue terminal so that we could take on new maritime tenants. Mitsubishi is the first product of that expenditure. And they wanna build two warehouses, bring in 600,000 tons of cement a year, bulk cement that would be shipped to the San Diego County market as opposed to hauling that from Long Beach or Ensenada where they would go if they can't conclude this deal. Uh, tremendous cost savings, but the important thing is it brings hundreds of high paying middle class jobs into San Diego. The longshoremen that unload the ships, the warehousemen, the building trades that build the warehouses and the truck drivers. And all of this has been killed at the port's December meeting by the seven commissioners that run the port district voting that Mitsubishi can't have the lease and bring those jobs to San Diego unless they commit to electric trucks to haul all of the cement. There is no technology in the world that can haul 27 tons of cement 16 hours a day. So in essence, these environmental groups are killing the deal under the guise of protecting the local neighborhood, Barrio Logan. So is there a compromise you think that can be reached or, or do you think technology might catch up and those kinds of trucks might be built whenever they need to be built? Well, the state has already imposed a standard of all electric trucks by 2035. Now, if that can't be done, the state government is in a position to push that deadline out. Mitsubishi would do the deal today with all electric trucks if they could, but it just doesn't exist. The compromise is that Mitsubishi has already made numerous concessions. They've agreed to use all new diesel engines with ha which have 40% less particulates. They're gonna convert their ships to shore power when they're in port. So in essence, they've cre created a negative carbon impact. What the port needs to do to make this work is to recognize that the claimed interests of the neighborhood do not exceed the interests of 3.3 million people and those hundreds of good middle-class jobs and ask Mitsubishi, which they'll agree to do, to simply agree that if the technology exists, if it's cost efficient, and if the infrastructure exists to re-energize those trucks, they would then be mandated to go to it. But here's, here's the problem, Logan. If we draw the line on electric trucks that don't exist, we're sending a message around the globe that nobody can come into our port for maritime and if we're gonna stop maritime because of trucks, then we've got to stop industry because of trucks. We have a widening income and wealth gap in this country and in this city. And it's those high paying middle-class jobs in the trades and the longshoremen and the truckers that are being shut out of this economy. And so in the name of the environment, we're gonna shut down jobs. And the city council ultimately has the power to lobby their own commissioners. We have three commissioners. Two of them have opposed this deal. And yet I've spoken to everybody on the city council and all of the new members, and they all say creation of jobs is their number one priority for the port. Well, let's see what they do to get their commissioners back on track because we've lost this industry unless we go chase it down and apologize to Mitsubishi and ask them to come back. Bob Oddley, local attorney, community activist. Bob, uh, keep us up to date uh, as to what the next steps are. Uh, great to talk to you. Thanks for shedding some light on this issue for us. We, we can turn this into a win-win and we need to do that. Appreciate it.